Uh. Oh. <laughs> That's the start of your video. Uh. Uh. I'm hungry. Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm John Brown and today is episode one of what really grinds my gears. And this is an opinion based video. Um, sorry if it offends you. If it does offend you, then let me know in the comments. If you agree with me, let me know in the comments. But for episode one, I'm going to tell you what the top 10 things that metal guitarists are doing wrong. So number one, using a fret wrap to cover up bad technique. Now I get it. Guitars make weird noises, you know, above the nut, behind the bridge. So you want to mute those for your recording and stuff. But when you've got a fret wrap on your fretboard, 90% of the time, it's literally because you're not learning how to mute your strings. So stop it. Number two, you're concentrating on lead playing and you're not putting any time into learning rhythm. Now, if you've got a five minute song and you're playing a lead part for 30 seconds of that song, that means you're playing rhythm 90% of the time. So why are you not putting any focus on it? Like, I get it, there's a grey area where you could say that Steve Vai and Joe Satriani play lead all the time, but melody requires a certain amount of rhythm. So put some time into playing rhythm and getting better at it. Stop focusing on trying to shred 200 notes per second and then just forsaking all of the rhythm. What are you doing? Number three, trying to wow people with technique, but you've never written a song. Now, think about all those songs that you love from back in the day, the ones that really created an emotional response within you or brought you back to an old memory. Like, it's not the technique that brought you there. It's the fact that the notes that they chose in the rhythm that they chose really moved you. So try, like, it's all good and well that you're trying to impress people with this technique, but write a song and try and move people. Number four, you're overcompensating with noise gates because you've got shit technique. Like, why have you got three noise gates running on your Axe effects? You don't need three noise gates. You need to learn to be able to control your guitar when it's got a wall of distortion on it. Most importantly, it's going to make you a better guitar player. You're going to learn how to control your instrument properly. Stop turning on so many noise gates. You only need one. Number five, using too much gain and overcompensating with compression because you hit the strings like a pussy. Now, we play metal. It's meant to sound aggressive. And if you're expecting your drummer to hit as hard as he can to portray that aggression, then you're just gonna ruin it by tickling your strings over the top. If you hit harder, that means you can use less gain, get the gain from the attack of your pick, and it's gonna sound better. Less gain, more clarity. Number six, you're not appreciating James Hetfield enough. Like if you try to downpick all of Master of Puppets, shit is fucking hard. So then you'll realize that he's God because he was doing that while he was singing. Like when you started as a guitar player, you probably, you know, learnt Master of Puppets, but you alternate picked it. So it came across that it was easy. But to get that kind of aggression, you need to downpick the whole thing. Try it. Eight minutes of downpicking that song, your arm will be on the floor. Number seven, you're not playing to a metronome every day. Playing to a metronome every day will internalize a clock, which means that when you go to the rehearsal room with a drummer, you're actually going to play in time. Like, why aren't you practicing to a metronome every day? It will improve every aspect of your playing as a guitar player. You'll play tighter, you'll play cleaner, and everything will sound better. Number eight, you're not recording yourself to hear back where you can improve on your technique. It's so easy to get access to recording equipment, buy an interface, record a DI, record your distortion patch, and critically analyze what you're doing wrong. You can improve so many things by doing this. If you check against the metronome that you should be playing against, you can see whether you're ahead of the beat, behind the beat, or on the grid. And you don't want to be ahead, because if you're ahead, you're pushing, and that doesn't feel good. But behind the beat, you're going to be in the pocket, you're going to be in the groove, and it's going to sound great. Then you can actually pull apart your playing as well, and say, I need to focus on that bit a little bit more, and you can slow it down and actually practice it. There is so many benefits to recording yourself, because you can't hear it when you're playing the guitar. Start recording yourself. Number nine. Progressive metal is meant to progress. So stop writing riff salads and calling it progressive. When I was in school, my music teacher said to me that you should never play a new idea before introducing it first. And that's what progressing is. You take an idea, you progress to something else, and it has the essence of that idea. 
playing 13 riffs in a row that have no correlation to the one before it is just a mess. That's not progressive. Stop doing it. And finally, number 10, we all think we're better than we actually are. We have a whole lifetime to master this instrument. So never settle. Don't think that you're never going to get any better. There's always going to be something new to learn. So constantly evolve and practice. Please, for the love of God, practice. Thank you for watching. I've been John Brown. Thank you for watching What Grinds My Gears. There's going to be many more of these, and I'm sorry if it offended you. The truth sometimes hurts. Now do a thumbnail picture. No, it should be.